Hello class, this is chapter 6. We're going to look at bonds, debt, characteristics, and valuation. Again, this is accounting 350, corporate finance. Learning outcomes for this chapter. Number one, describe the basic characteristics of debt and some of the different types of debt. Two, discuss bond ratings and the information they provide to investors. Three, explain how bond prices are determined. Four, explain how bond yields, market rates, are determined. Five, describe the relationship between bond prices and interest rates and explain why it is important for investors to understand this relationship. So these are our objectives for this chapter. So some of the characteristics of debt. So principal value equals face value, which also equals maturity value and par value. Interest payments, maturity date, priority to assets and earnings, and, and control of the firm voting rights. Okay, so those, these are how we take a look at debt. Whenever we look at corporations in the United States, they can be large and they can be small. Typically, if the business is owned or the LLC or the corporation is owned by a family, the voting rights are controlled by the family or if you have uh, partners in LLC, then you, depending on how you structure your charter or your, your, whenever you discuss with your partners, that's when you discuss the voting rights and the control of the firm. Types of debt, short-term debt, there's treasury bills, discounted securities issued by the US government to finance operations, uh, repurchase agreement, one firm sells financial, act, financial assets to another, that's supposed to say assets to another firm with a promise to repurchase the securities later at a higher price. And federal funds, overnight loans from one bank to another. Continued short-term debt, banker's acceptance, it's a post-dated check, commercial paper, a type of promissory note, an IOU issued by large financially sound firms, certificate of deposit or a CD, represent a time deposit at a bank or other financial intermediary. Euro dollar deposit, a deposit in a bank outside the United States that is not converted to the currency of the foreign country. Money market mutual funds, pooled funds that are invested in money market instruments and managed by investment companies. So now we're going to take a look at long term. So Term loans, loans obtained from financial institutions on which the borrower agrees to make a series of payments consisting of principal and principal, well, it's interest and principal on specific dates. Bonds, a long-term contract where a borrower agrees to make payments of interest during the life of the loan and then repay the principal amount borrowed at the end of the life of the bond. Common bonds, government bonds, municipal bonds are issued by state and local governments. Treasury bonds are issued by the US Treasury. There's also a corporate bond, there's a mortgage bond, and a bond backed by fixed assets. There's debenture and unsecured bond. Subordinated debenture, a bond that has a claim on assets only after the senior debt has been paid off in the event of liquidation. Okay, liquidation means to sell all the assets. Okay. Types of corporate bonds, there's an income bond, a bond that pays interest only if the firm earns enough income. There's a putable bond, a bond that can be redeemed at the bondholder's option if the firm takes a particular action. Indexed purchasing power bond, the so index bond or purchasing power, a bond with interest payments that are based on an inflation index helps protect the bondholder from inflation. There is also the floating rate bonds. The bonds rate floats with market interest rates rather than with the inflation rate. There's other debt instruments, zero or very low coupon bonds, bonds that pay no annual interest, sold at a discount below par. Junk bonds, high yield, high risk bonds generally used to finance mergers and leverage buyouts and troubled companies. Junk bonds are usually have a high yield, high risk though, high yield, high risk. 
bond contract features, uh, indenture, a formal agreement contract between the issuer of a bond and the bondholders, trustee, an official who ensures that the bondholders' interests are protected and the terms of the indenture are carried out. Restrictive covenant, a provision in a debt contract that constrains the actions of the borrower. Call provision, a provision in a bond contract that gives the issue the right to redeem the bonds under specific or specified terms prior to the normal maturity date. Refunding, retiring an existing bond issue using the proceeds of a newly issued bond. Sinking fund, a required annual payment designed to pay off a bond or preferred stock issue. Firms handle a sinking fund in one of two ways. Call in for redemption, a certain percentage of the bond each year by the required amount of bonds in the open market. Convertible feature permits the bondholder to convert the bond into shares of common stock at a fixed price. There is the one-way conversion. Investors cannot convert the stock back to bonds. So all of these are definitely spelled out in the type of bond and the contract that you sign. Foreign debt instruments, foreign debt, debt sold by a foreign borrower, but denominated in the currency of the country in which it is sold. So if it's sold in the U.S., it's in U.S. dollars. If it's sold in Japan, then you're going to think you're going to use the yen, Jap the Japanese yen. Maybe in Europe, you'd be used the euro. It just depends, but usually the most common currency in the world is the U.S. dollar, but it just depends. Euro debt, debt sold in a country other than one in whose currency it is denominated. So bond ratings, AAA, AA bonds are extremely safe. Investment grade bonds, the lowest rated bonds that many banks and other institutional investors can legally hold. From what I remember, from I think a couple years ago, the uh, Navajo Nation has a bond as well, and they're actually rated AAA. So that would be kind of AAA, this AAA, okay? And Moody's is the one that looks at it. So high quality, um, low risk. Okay, so those are A, little, two little A's, double A, uh, double A. Then investment grade medium. This is a medium risk. A, A, or triple B. And then these are junk bonds, substandard high, uh, double B, B. Uh, speculative extremely high, triple C, C, A, A, uh, C, and D. So keep in mind these junk bonds have high risk, extremely high risk right here, okay, as it indicates on here. Okay, typically if you want to look at maybe having 5 to 6% um, interest each year, this is the area over here. They usually get into the 15, 20s, actually above 10 to 20%, sometimes 30. Okay, and remember earlier I said, they invest in like mergers, um, joint ventures, things of that nature. Okay. Bond rating criteria, financial strength of the company, collateral provisions, seniority of the debt, restrictive covenants, seeking fund or deferred call provision, litigation possibilities, and then regulations. Yields on selected long-term bonds, 1990 to 2015. Um, notice these... Uh, the bonds uh, yield percentage definitely decreased um, over over time. Okay, uh, but look at this though. I mean, it, it was pretty consistent as time um, went. Time is always here on the x-axis, and your yield percent is over here on the y-axis. Um, so these, uh, whenever you look at this over time, they're they're very consistent, and you can kind of see the uh, the market, you know, kind of uh, decrease to the point where now. Actually, this was in 2015 where U.S. government bond was at uh, probably about 3%-ish right here, maybe 2 3%. That means you'll get 2%. Usually when the stock market is about a tank, people pull their money out of their high yield, uh, I guess, what, how would you say it, uh, super aggressive bond. Then you, they would, uh, not a bond, but in the market, they would put their money back into these U.S. government bonds, or even a corporate bond, but definitely, uh, definitely, um, if you're young, you probably invest in this green line because you want your your rate of return higher 
then as you get medium age, you want the red one. As you get older, you want to know that your money will be there. Uh, you, whenever the market goes lower, you're, you'll lose less money. Okay, keep that in mind when you look at something like this. Importance of bond ratings. A bond's rating is an indication of its default risk. Most bonds are purchased by institutional investors who are legally restricted to invest in, to investment grade securities BAA or higher. Changes in ratings affect a firm's ability to borrow long-term capital and the cost of using that capital. So it's definitely, you know, you need to take a look at that and see if they do pay their money back. Okay. Basic valuation based on the time value of money concept. We know that value of anything is based on the present value of the cash flows. The assets is expected to produce in the future. Okay. Remember, we're trying to we're looking, if we're looking at the future, we're trying to figure out how much money we'll get back from that, that investment that we make or that, that, that loan that we take, that in this case, the debt that we take, okay? And if we pay back our money, we'll have a higher um, bond rating. Basic valuation model, we've seen this timeline before. Uh, right here, we have zero first year, second year, and then N minus one is, you know, the number of years minus one. Value equals the sum of the present value of future cash flows, okay? And that's what this says right here. Just explain a little bit more. Okay, and don't forget N is, num N is number of years or time periods. Valuation of bonds, principal amount, face value, maturity value, par value, the amount of money the firm borrows, and promises to repay at some future date or maturity, date of maturity. Coupon payment. This specified number of dollars of interest paid each period on a bond generally each six months. Oh, disregard that. Okay, here's the bond value again. This one is uh, present value of interest, uh, present value uh, at maturity. Bond value equals, so whenever we see V of D in the future, we see that, that indicates bond value. V of D is bond value. Okay, RD bonds required rate of return, RFD. Interest, dollar interest paid each year. N equals years to maturity, and M equals maturity value of the bond. Okay. So here is the formula. Um, whenever you look at it and break it down, bond value equals the interest times 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus uh, RD to the N divided by RD. And don't forget, RD means bonds required rate of return. Okay. Uh, plus M, the maturity, times 1 over, this is our growth rate again, 1 plus RD to the nth power. Okay, so this is what it would look like. But here's some values. Here's uh, Genesco, 10%, 15-year, uh, $1,000 bond, numerical solution. So here's $100. Okay, so what we do is 100. We put these values in here. 1 minus 1 over 1 1.10, that would be our interest rate to the 15 year, over 10. Plus, remember, a maturity will be $1,000. So 1 over 1 1.10 to the 15. So when we do all the calculation, so this is, will be our, our growth rate, 7.60, 100, plus 1,000 times 0 0.02. Remember, if it's... If it's um, Actually, if it's less than 1, then it's going to decrease. If it's greater than 1, it'll increase. So these end up balancing out. So then we get 1,000 here. Okay, and That's kind of basic algebra if you think about it. So on a calculator, here's what we do. We input our N is 15. Inches per year is 10. We want the present value. Um, amount of payment is $100. Future value of 1,000. So our output will be 1,000, which is what we had calculated in this example right here down at the bottom. Okay, again, bond value with semi-annual compounding. Semi-annual is what we're doing is we're dividing it by two. So notice it's all the same except we divide it by two. Up here we go two times in as well because we're doing it twice per year. Same here, twice per year. So in six month increments, okay? So we have to split that interest rate. That's what this indicates. But other than that, the formula is just the same. We're just saying semi-annual. If we said Paid quarterly, this would be divided by 4, divide by 4, times 4, divide by 4, divide by 4, and then times 4. Okay? 
So here we go, 8%, 14-year, $1,000 bond, compounded semi-annually. So again, here n is going to be 14 divided by 2 equals 28, or times 2. I don't know why I said divided. Interest per year, 8 divided by 2 will give us 4. Our payment will be 100 divided by 2, or 50. Future value is going to be 1,000. So our inputs, n, we're going to put 28. Interest will be 4. Present value, that's what we're looking for. Our payment of $50 each semi-annual payment, and future value of 1,000. So our output will get one. We'll get $1,166.63. Okay, excuse me. Yield to maturity, YTM. YTM is the average rate of return or rate of return earned on a bond if it is held to maturity. That means we held the bond all the way till the maturity date when if it's five years, then it's five years. Okay. So suppose that you were offered a 10-year 8% coupon, $1,000 par value bond at a price of $875. Interest from this bond is paid semi-annually. What is the bond's um, yield to maturity? Okay. So what you're doing is you're, you're buying it at $875, so you're saying you're going to make $1,000. Okay, make, keep that in mind. So here's what it looks like. Yield to maturity is the average rate of return earned on a bond if it is held to maturity. So here we are. We're taking a look at this. V of D, 40. Don't forget it's semi-annual. So divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. Okay, yield to maturity, 875, 40, 40. Okay. So keep in mind, this is going from to the 2, and we're going to have another one right here to the 3. And another one right here to the four, all the way so on till 20. Okay, because 10 years divided by, or 10 times 2 is how we get 20. Because we're doing, this is tw this value is 20 because, remember, we're doing it in 6 month increments. Okay, and this is, this uh, our, our yield to maturity rate is going to be divided by 2 as well. That's why it indicates right there. Okay. So yield to maturity uh, computation on a calculator. So we're going to go 20 as our end value. Interest, we're trying to figure that out. Uh, our present value of uh, 875 minus 875. Payment of 40. By the way, it's minus because we're looking at this and bringing it back. Like we're trying to calculate our interest rate right here when we first invested to see. And keep in mind, 5% is really good. If you have money in a savings account, you're getting like a tenth of a percentage. Okay, this is 5% on this bond. That means you, you, you invest $875, but you're getting $1,000. So you're growing your money initially 5% per year up to $1,000. Yield to maturity is the average annual rate of return earned on a bond if it is held to maturity. Remember, you only get the 1000 if you hold it to maturity. If you cut out right here, you only get the interest up to that point. So the goal is to keep the money in there. Also, whenever you're looking at taxes, you're going to be taxed on this 875, the difference between 1,000 minus 875, that'll be your capital gain right there that you'll pay on, okay? So keep that in mind. Now, also, if you take that $1,000 and you roll it over into another investment, then you're not having to calculate that capital gain. So keep that in mind if you invest, okay? Um, interest per year is 5% is the six month rate for return. So that'll be divided by two. Yield to maturity, uh, oh no, it's multiplied. Why is that multiplied? Okay, all right, so 10% annual rate of return. Oh, okay, because we're going in 5% five, 5 increments per year. Actually, this we're gaining 10%. This is um, on our output. So in each year, we're gaining 10%, which is really good. That's a pretty good rate of return. That means if you were to invest um, $1,000 the next year, on interest, you'd make 10% of a thousand is a hundred dollars, so you'd make a hundred bucks. Okay, so keep that in mind. Yield to call YTC is the average rate of return earned on a bond if it is held until the first call date. Okay, um, NFC is call date. No, oh, NFC is number of interest periods to the first call date. Okay, interest, interest. So notice how we're taking our interest divided by. 1 plus uh, our rate divided by 2 to the 1 all the way to however many, whatever length we're holding this to, okay? So this is the uh, equation for this. 
And keep in mind, this is to one, to two. If this was 10 years, it'd go to a three, to a four, to a five, all the way till 10, okay? So yield to call, suppose the bond can be called in four years at a call price of 1,080, okay? So right here, we our, our end value is eight. Keep in mind it's four years, but we multiply it to get two. So our interest is 6.87, which is really good. Present value is uh, our present value is 875 in 40 payments. If we held it all the way, it'd be 1800. But we're gonna pull it out earlier. So when we get 6.87 percent times two, we get 13.76 percent in in a, in a calendar year. Okay. So interest rates and bond values. Okay. Relationship of market rate. RD with coupon rate C equal 10%. RD equals 10% equals C. 12% is greater than C, which is our coupon rate. And uh, our, our rate is 8%, which is less than our coupon rate. Bond value um, of our bond, value of our bond, N equals 15, payments uh, of $100, future value of 100, and our interest per year on the bond, 1,000. If it's less than, if it's greater than 12%, 863.78. If it's less than 8%, 1171.19. Okay. So relationship of market price V of D and maturity. Value M equals a thousand. Okay, V of D equals M sells at par. If it's less than, if, if V of D is less than M, sells at a discount. Notice how this is lower. Sells at a premium. A premium is more than. Okay. So that's what it's saying. The amount we're getting back is greater than the maturity rate. So that's why this is higher. This is par. Par means equally. Discount means we're getting less. Sells at a premium. This is if we're investing. But if we're offering this money, to, if we're offering this bond, we want to pay a discount, not a premium. Do you see how it switches? If we're investing the money or loaning the money, we want the mo to get the most money back. But if we're paying it, then we want to, we want to pay less. So it just depends on what side of the contract you're on. Changes in bond values over time, wherever or whenever the going rate of interest RD equals the coupon rate, bond will sell at par. I kind of just explained this already. An increase in the interest rate will cause the price of an outstanding bond to fall. A decrease in interest rates will cause the price to rise. The market value of a bond will always approach its par value as, it, as, it, as its maturity date approaches, provided the firm does not go bankrupt. Okay. So that's the key. It doesn't go bankrupt. Let's hope it doesn't go bankrupt. Time path of the value of a 10% 1,000 par value bond when market interest rates are 8%, 10%, and 12%. Okay, this is the 10%. Oh, no, no, this is the... Where is it located? So here's the maturity. Here's the 12%, 10%, and 8% if it goes below 8%. Okay, here's the premium, here's the par, and here's the discount. Okay, discount, we're paying less, par, and we're paying the same, and then premium. Okay, but keep in mind as this gets closer to that, it'll be $1,000. But keep in mind, we paid, I think it was $875. I think it was $875. Bond yield return, bond yield, equal R of D, equal current interest, or yield plus capital gains yield. So current interest rate or current rate, capital gains yield, so interest divided by VD beginning. Uh, and then we have to take the difference of our beginning and ending and then divide it by our beginning. Okay, basically it's almost kind of like we're trying to find the average or trying to find the growth or decrease. Interest rate risk on a bond, interest rate risk, or price risk, the risk of changes in bond prices to which investors are exposed due to changing interest rates. Keep in mind, remember earlier we talked about the bond and it started at like 8 or 10% and it started decreasing? That's kind of what this is talking about, okay? Interest rate reinvestment rate risk. I know that sounds confusing. Interest rate reinvestment rate risk. The risk that income from my bond portfolio will vary because cash flows have been reinvested at current or perhaps lower market rates, okay? So we, we're just reinvesting the money back into the company or 
the company, whoever we loan the money to, because we're talking about debt here. Value of long and short term 10% annual coupon rates. So here's our 15 year bond. Here's our one year bond. Notice how flat it is. Here's our 15 year bond. Okay. And that's year 16 here. Year. Oh, you know, these are interest rates over here on this side right here. Interest rate. And here's our bond value. This is one of the only times I've ever seen interest rate on the horizontal axis. Okay. Bond prices in recent years. Okay, so take a look at this. Um, in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015 years to maturity, 4.8, 3.8, 3.8, 4.4, 3.4. So our market price, okay, went it was high at 36, then it went to 28, then it went to 107, then it went to 1013, and it's slowly decreasing to a thousand. Okay, current yield 4.8. And keep in mind, 4.8 is a really good percentage. Capital gain, 3.6, minus 0.4, minus 2, plus 60, minus 1.35. And our total yield, 8.48%, 3%, 3.7, oh, I might as well call that 4%, 3%, 5%. All I'm doing is rounding, so 3%, okay? I just rounded those. Okay, so that's the end of bonds and debt in short-term and long-term debt. Let me know if you have any questions, and remember to get your work in by Sunday night for the exams and the discussion questions and the same gauge assignments online those are due ex actually at midnight as well actually just discussion questions are due Monday morning at 8 o'clock so just remember if you have any questions please email me I do like to talk about these if you have questions or anything like that so thank you have a good day